Hello! This is going to be part 3 of my 2013 Cicada 3301 series. Since my last video, I had the opportunity to speak about the value of challenges like Cicada at the Crypto and Privacy Village at DEF CON this year. If you haven't had a chance to see the recording of that, I'll include a link to it in the description of the video. Otherwise, let's pick up where we left off last time, with this strange PGP signed message from 3301. This message, obtained using outguess on the Gematria Primus image, would appear at first glance to be empty other than the signature indicating that it did in fact originate from 3301. On closer inspection, however, these lines would turn out to be a combination of two white space characters, tabs and spaces, making up about four lines. Thankfully, when faced with only two characters being used to carry information, our options are quite limited, and in this case one of the most obvious guesses would be correct. This is a binary message, with the tabs and spaces indicating zeros and ones. A quick replacement of those would turn the seemingly empty message into this, and then a conversion from binary would give us the following message. There's many easy ways of converting binary to text, either online or in your terminal, but I'll include a link in the description to one of my favorite online tools for converting bases. The text says, come to this address, we shall await you there, good luck, 3301. As I've mentioned a number of times before, this kind of address is for a hidden service on the Tor network. However, pointing your Tor browser to this address this time wouldn't give us as much as we'd become used to getting from the next step in the puzzle. If you visit this address, you'd be greeted with this. Now, the ASCII art Cicada logo has become fairly famous in the intervening years. Now you finally all know the actual source of it. What's more important, however, would be this comment. Web browsers are useless here. And indeed, as claimed, there is nothing waiting either in the page source, on the page itself, no signed message to be found anywhere, no real usable information at all. So obviously a different way of looking would be required. Taking stock of what we know, what the page can tell us, we know that the server is responding to a typical request for a page on port 80 over TCP as sent by your browser. So what would be required next is a way of communicating with the server in that particular way other than a browser. Now there's a number of options. In my particular case, I used a command line tool called Netcat. It allows TCP communication to an address over any port that you supply without all the other automated parts of being served a page that come with using a browser. Obviously the server at this address has been offline for many years now but I've created a recreation of it to show you what connecting to it would have looked like. The only trick this required beyond the normal use of a tool like this is that you'd have to indicate to it that you wanted to use Tor, otherwise this type of address won't resolve to anything. This is just done by providing an outgoing port, which by default for Tor I think is 9050. So running Netcat and connecting to that address would show you something like this. Again, this is just my recreation of the server since the original is long offline, but I can vouch for it looking more or less identical to what greeted me those many years ago. It's the same thing we saw from the browser with an important distinction. It's now waiting for us to send it some sort of reply. Now there's a number of interesting commands that the server will handle, and it also had a number of sometimes comical responses to you trying inputs it wasn't prepared to deal with. Some of the better ones before we get to the part that actually let us carry onward had to do with the primes and how they related to the table given to us in the last step, the gematria associating letters and prime values. If you typed primes, a rather large list of prime numbers counting up to 3301 would be printed. It's been pointed out that between 71 and 1229, a large number of primes have been excluded from what would otherwise be a fairly complete list. The exact reason for this would be widely speculated on, but given there hasn't been a provable reason or a use for any of those missing primes in the intervening years, I'll show you the ones that were missing and mostly leave it at that. To go along with our list of primes, if you were to type a number in, the server would try to factor it for you. If it isn't prime, it'll list the factors like this. And if it was prime, things get more interesting. First, it will reverse your number and try to factor that instead. If the reverse isn't prime, you'll get its factors printed just like we had before. However, if the number is prime and the reverse of the number is also prime, you'll get this instead. This is introducing us to an idea that would really come into play more significantly in 2014, much like the rest of the Gematria Primus, that we should be looking at provided information in multiple directions. 
Next, there's the count command. And here's where things really began to pick up. If you were to type any normal word or phrase, you'd get one of their messages informing you that it isn't a valid input for this. However, if you were to put the count before it, whatever word or phrase that came after it would have every letter converted to a prime through the Gematria Primus and the value of all of those added up and provided to you with an indicator of if this total is prime. Finally, if that prime number could be reversed and would still be prime, you get this printed like we saw in the factor command. This particular idea of phrases added up and seeing if they were prime through the Gematria, now introduced to us through this command, would quickly be discovered to be irrelevant across all three years of the Cicada puzzles. Not surprisingly, nearly everything 3301 has ever said has been totaled up by someone in this way, and many of them have very interesting results. I'm going to use the instar emergence as an example. If you recall the poem that was waiting for us when we inspected the file, it looked like this. If we were to count every phrase through the gematria, here would be the totals, these three numbers. Now all three of these are prime numbers, and obviously reversed would also be prime numbers, and note that that last line, 1229, is the same number as where our prime list from before continued after the missing primes. While it's incredibly interesting that all three of these would add to a prime value, we're not quite done yet. There was a strange, very specific number at the start, listing this as parable 15952776641. The word parable, by the way, also adds up to a prime through the Gematria. While the parable number wasn't a prime itself, it is actually the product of multiplying these three values received by totaling the lines together. Now, these sorts of strange, Mathematical calculations would show up all over the things 3301 said across all three years of the puzzle. We'll look more at how these helped solve things when we get to 2014, where the runes and the primes from the gematria would be much more important. For now, other than for curiosity's sake, this function wouldn't provide us with very much. Finally, there were two other important commands. The first would provide us with our way forward. If you typed either hello or get 3301, you'd be given the following. Thankfully, this would prove a little easier than some of the hex that we've had before, and this just needed to be converted back from hex to create a normal ASCII message, shown here. There was one more command of note, and that would be the hint command. If you typed it, you'd get something that looks quite a bit like our hello message, but sadly on its own didn't seem to convert to anything readable. We're going back to our favorite decryption method of 2013, and we're going to be XORing it with one of the files from the Cicada ISO, this time 560.00. This turns this message into something interesting, but like so much of the rest of the things from this server, not particularly useful. That's roughly everything to come from this particular onion address, though it's quite unique, at least to this stage of the puzzle, that so much of it was just interesting, not particularly useful. This would be the first time that I or any other solver would be left wondering at exactly why 3301 had picked to share all of this with us, instead of just providing something to be solved and moved past. Many of these questions, of course, would be answered next year in 2014, but at the time would mean a very long wait and a frankly unbelievable amount of speculation from the community. We did have a new Onion address, of course, and I'll show you what it looks like, and it may explain why there was so much time for wondering and speculating at this particular moment in the 2013 puzzle. Connecting to the address given to us by the hello message would provide only this. Looking into the source of the page would provide some very unnecessary clarification. Of course, none of us were particularly feeling patient at this time, so a lot of digging around would eventually lead to one of the only things you could come close to calling a mistake from 3301 in one of their puzzles. Attempts to connect to it in the same manner as the previous hidden service would send an error to your terminal. The error, however, would contain the clear net IP address for the server that was hosting the hidden service, as well as the Apache version. Soon after this was discovered, the page was taken offline by 3301 and wouldn't reopen for a number of days. The IP itself was for a rented server out of one of the major VPS companies, and was physically located in Tokyo like several of the others that would be found in future years. Of course, attempts to find anything out about who had rented it would occur for years to come and would all fail. With the onion down and solvers waiting, that's where I'm going to leave off for this particular part of the series. 
We'll come back next time with what the site looked like when it did come back up, and how it related to the hint message found from the previous site. Until then, good luck.